Today, I'm pleased to introduce to this session how PICMO leveraged Zillow's cloud to unlock the future of photo management. And our guest speaker, Alex Alexander. Alex is the CEO and a co-founder of PICMO. It's actually 2020. PICMO is known for its AI-powered app that streamlines photo organization and search. Prior to PICMO, Alex co-founded 1011 Group, a healthcare software company, and led it to significant growth before its sale in 2017. With a background in chemical engineering, Alex has over 35 years of experience in operations, software development, and strategic planning, holding executive roles in various companies with revenue ranging from $300 million to $17 billion. Welcome, Alex. Um, so firstly, <laughs> we're really excited to have you. So firstly, just like uh, tell us a little bit more about what PICMO is, what it business does. Well, PICMO is uh, designed to be an everything app and uh, it is available on both uh, Google, Android uh, operating systems, uh, as, well as, um, as well as Apple um, iOS operating system. Um, and um, we, we initially uh, started PICMO three and a half years ago and, um, and really just to, to solve a specific problem. And uh, we, we, we didn't realize that the problem initially was so pervasive um, until we, we started sort of um, talking to our friends and saying, hey, do you have the same problem that we do? And the problem is, you know, we sat down three and a half years ago. I was on the phone with my with my business partner Jerry, and um, and I said, "Hey Jerry, I want to show you this picture of uh, me and my wife and my family um, sitting at dinner having uh, a bottle of red wine." And it was probably two and a half years prior to that time, um, so it was not a it was a picture I had. I had a sort of memory of in my mind, but I didn't have access to it right away, you know, as, as a recent picture, because it was a picture taken a while ago. Um, <clears throat> so we're talking and, and then I'm looking uh, for the picture. And finally, 10 minutes later, Jerry says, um, are, are you still looking for that picture? And I said, yeah, I am. And, uh, and he said, uh, oh boy. Uh, I said, I said, well, um, I, I think this is a business opportunity. And uh, so we, we did what we do best. And we started uh, um, creating a st strategic business plan and, and, um, and, and really sort of ferreting out um, that this was a problem that uh, is very pervasive, no matter what operating system you have, no matter what phone you have, no matter whether you're eight years old or 80 years old. And, and, uh, if you have uh, thousands of pictures like most people do, um, it's very difficult to find the picture. You use the uh, sort of in, in uh, native search experience in, in, in either operating system. And uh, once you get past trying to describe uh, more than two with more than two words, uh, trying to describe a picture, um, you, you, you can't find it. And uh, it's, it's a very frustrating experience. So then we said, you know, once we once we solve that problem, we want to make sure that the app is useful in a much broader sense. And so that's why I, I say it's it's an it's an everything app because it does much more than that. Today we're going to focus on the on the streamline and the photo experience, but uh, the app does much more than that. And we we spent uh, three and a half years developing the artificial intelligence that uh, that powers um, that really is the engine behind um, how this, the, the, uh, um, the app works and how it works so well. And um, uh, it, it's, it's really, and we, pat, we patented that, that AI engine uh, because we've spent so much time and effort to, uh, to build it. So, um, uh, so without further ado, you, you know, you, I know you have a demo that I pre-recorded. Uh, uh, it's an informal demo. You can go ahead and, and play that. Yeah, thanks, Alex. I really love that story. So that's why I just wanted you to, to tell everyone here. And I really always appreciate your team and made this demo for us. Um, so let's just take a look at the demo.
I'm not hearing any audio oh. from the from the demo. But can I hear any audio? Um, sorry. I'm not sure. If, I'm not sure if anybody else is hearing audio from the demo. Um. Okay. So it might be some. Uh... Sorry. Um... My some like. Okay, it's, okay, so no, no, okay. So sorry, sorry about that. I guess there's some like um, setting issue. Um, uh, yeah, I'm just I'm seeing in the chat that people are saying there's no audio. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, okay, I'm really sorry about that, but uh, uh, I well, guess- I can, I can- Yeah, uh, exactly, <laughs> that's what I propose. Yeah, maybe you can just like uh, talk it through like a little bit. Um, All right. Yeah, right. it's fine. Uh, if we got uh, a little bit silent. Yeah, thanks. Sure. Really appreciate that. Yep, let's just do I'll, it. I'll, retra I'll retrace my steps here. So, yeah. um, okay, so as this, uh, the video, I'll, I'll just sort of dub over uh, uh, in live voice here, uh, this video. So this is a landing page of PICMO. And as you see, uh, we're at the library. Uh, I have 6,542 pictures uh, in, in my account. Um, it has taken uh, PICMO, when I say it, has taken um, uh, all of the pictures that are in my, this is, happens to be the iOS version on my, on my Apple phone. Um, and it has taken the, the 6,542 pictures from the gallery um, in on my phone. And um, it has synced, and we use the word sync, as you can see in the top right-hand corner, um, the pictures up to the PICMO cloud. So what happens when, when that happens? So, the PICMO, the, the uh, pictures get um, um, encrypted and they're the, everything the from a security standpoint is encrypted in transit. And uh, the pictures go up to the PICMO cloud, then get analyzed by the uh, PICMO AI engine and uh, it produces an embedding. And uh, that embedding, so now enter Zillas and that embedding gets stored in the Zillas cloud. So uh, as you can see here, what happens is the AI looks at the pictures, determines what's inside these pictures, and automatically creates uh, albums. And uh, the album names are uh, designed to be the uh, sort of the centerpiece for whatever's in those pictures. And then as you can see, for example, animals and, I had, and the number 55 next to it. So that tells me that out of the 6,542 pictures, 55 pictures uh, are of animals or the, or the AI has determined are of, of principally animals. And, uh, and then those pictures are stored in this animals album. So that is, um, that's sort of this, this landing page. You can continue the demo. Okay, there we go. So, so I, uh, I clicked on the animals uh, album and I got inside the animals album and then clicked on a specific animal picture and and here you see the deer and at the bottom of the screen you can see that I can share this picture if I wanted to share it um, inside or outside of PICMO I can download uh, the picture uh, if I wanted to do that and put it in a separate spot on my phone uh, and then I can of course can delete it in the upper right hand course uh, corner of that picture there was a little letter letter I which I'll get into later in the demo. Um, so I'm back at the library, and I think what I'm what I uh, wanted to do next is show the search. Yes, so I clicked on the the bottom right hand corner of the library. There was a little search button. I clicked that button, and I get to the search page here, and it, it immediately, obviously, is asking me describe the photo you want to find. I can either type uh, type it in from a text standpoint here. Or I can click on the microphone and I can and I can tell PICMO what I want uh, to search for. Um, in that oblong um, um, uh, little space there was giving me uh, sort of samples of uh, what I could say. So here I'm saying, show me all my pictures of a yellow Labrador retriever. Um, obviously, this is a very complex search. Um, you can see within less than a second, it's come up and showed me a picture of the Labrador Retriever in the top left-hand corner, the very first picture. I click on it, 
And then I, I'm going to click on the eye here and I'm going to show you some details about that particular picture. Um, and there you see the caption says a dog laying on, on a wooden floor next to a person, it tells me when I was uh, actually taken, tells me where it was taken. If location services are turned on on your phone while the picture was being taken, then um, then that's recorded as well. And then I can I can search by location as well. Um, one of the things I wanted to say here at this point in time is that that complex search is being analyzed by our natural language AI model that's embedded in the AI engine. That is then translated into an, an embedding. And that embedding is then sent to the Zillis cloud. And that is what does the search to actually get that picture in less than a second. And I'm going to talk a little bit later about how we came to Zillis and 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 why we're so bullish on on the Zillis cloud solution. So here I wanted to show a little bit about OCR optical character recognition that uh, our um, AI engine is capable of. Show me all my pictures of a sign that says Garden of the Gods. And so it, in the top left hand corner, the first picture that shows up is a picture with a sign that says Garden of the Gods. So it's actually reading the text inside of the picture. Um, and again, uh, it, it, you can do the same things with those pics, with that picture. Um, it shows location and, and all of the good stuff that's associated with the metadata on that picture. So that is the search function. And um, next uh, in the demo, I showed, uh, I clicked on the hamburger and uh, and started showing some detail about uh, some of the other features of, of the app, um, just to sort of give you all an idea. So you have the library and the search, which, which we went through. Um, settings, you know, allows you to change some details about permissions and things like that in the app. Um, Night Backup gives you the ability to be able to uh, do that sync process, um, you know, especially with 6,542 pictures like I had. Um, instead of doing it during the day, I can set it up so before I go to bed, I click I click on the sync process in Night Backup, and then it'll sync all the pictures at night. So when I wake up in the morning, it's all done. Um, <clears throat> notifications uh, will tell me when it's uh, syncing pictures. And uh, it will tell me um, as I, once I do that big sync, then um, I'm, I'm going to obviously continue to take pictures, but there'll be onesie twosie kind of pictures. And so I'll, I'll get a notification that, uh, you know, PICMO backed up and analyzed one picture or two pictures or whatever it is that, uh, that I took with the camera uh, later on. And then last is upload history. Um, Upload history gives me uh, a timeline of pictures that have been uploaded and when they were uploaded. So I can I can see um, specifically what was uploaded when. Um, so that's sort of, uh, I think, the demo in a nutshell, Steffi. Uh, I know I sort of short shortcut it a little bit there, but. No, that's great. Um, OK, then let's uh, try to talk about um... Zillow's cloud and a vector database. Um, sh share us about the story, how you get to know the whole category, under which circumstances you and your team were like, oh, that is some kind of technology we're definitely looking for. Yeah. So um, it's it's an interesting story. Uh, you know, we we, we uh, as you know, many people who are in the in the business of building apps uh, know that that it's a journey. And um, especially on the technology side, <laughs> not just on the business side. So our cloud is made up of uh, really two, I'll call it two major pieces. Um, we have sort of the administrative side of, of the PICMO app. And really all the brains are in the cloud. All right, both clouds. And I'm going to talk about the two different aspects of the clouds. Um, and then the app itself is is what's obviously running on the phones, um, but uh, on the uh, on the on the um, Microsoft Azure side, there's um, our I'll call it the administrative side of, of the uh, solution, and then all of the AI is uh, in the Google Cloud, 
and uh, which includes the Zillas, uh, which includes the Zillas solution as well. So, so when we uh, when we got to the point where we were creating our natural language search and and uh, we were um, we were building um, the, the the search results and and so forth. Um, one of the things that uh, we we figured out was the the performance was not very good. We were using um, um, a, a database uh, on the Microsoft Azure side, and it it uh, is was not specifically designed for what we were doing, um, especially on the uh, to deal with the embeddings uh, that that come from the AI engine. And so we went searching for, so our, our, our search results uh, would take like eight, eight to 10 seconds. So you'd, you'd put in a, a search phrase and, and it would take eight to 10 seconds uh, to come back with search results, which is completely unacceptable. I'm sure everybody on the phone or on this uh, webinar would agree that it's completely unacceptable. It needs to be some sub-second response. So we we searched for a solution that could could give us that, and um, we started down the path of um, standing up our own servers uh, with a vector database, and um, and and started down the process of trying to figure out how to how to um, configure it and 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 tune it for performance and so forth. And we we went down that path and it was starting to get very expensive from a from a labor standpoint um, and, and from a technology standpoint. And we we uh, what was encouraging was that we got from eight seconds down to probably four seconds. And we said, wow, uh, you know what 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 a great improvement, but not good enough. And uh, so we we said, um, uh, and then it went, and then jumped from four seconds back up to eight seconds, and uh, and we said, well, geez, what do we do wrong? What you know? And and we had to to spend uh, you know a week trying to figure out uh, what what we configured incorrectly or whatever. So so then uh, our um, our AI partner um, turned us on to Zillas and said, hey, have you have you explored? The Zillas cloud, and and we said no, we didn't. So uh, we started doing some research, and we contacted Zillas, and we started on the path of 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 uh, basically um, doing a test run and converting what we had created manually into the Zillas cloud with with the help of of the Zillas uh, technical folks, and we the first test run went from eight seconds down to one second. We, we we almost fell off our chair. It was, the performance was so good. And so uh, we said, okay, um, can this be sustained under, under uh, um, you know, higher loads? And so we began to load this, the, the, the Zilla solution up and we put it up, we put it under some extreme, extreme loads and, um, and it, it held up. I mean, it stayed, it stayed at sub, second response um, for literally hundreds and hundreds of thousands of pictures. And, uh, and so we were convinced that uh, the Zillas cloud was, was our solution. So we, um, we embarked on the path of, uh, of, of permanently including the Zillas solution into our overall architecture. And, um, <clears throat> and not only did it save us time, um, for the implementation piece, it saved us time for the debugging piece, and it saved us money overall when we when we compared it with standing up our own servers and licensing and so forth of uh, of the vector databases and and so forth. So so overall, it was a, it was a great business decision and a great technology decision. I oh, really appreciate I'll, that. I'll, I'll, stop, I'll stop there, Steffi, because I can keep going. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, actually, uh, Christina just like asking the chat, how did you decide on Zillas? So I think you probably have answered that. And uh, then the how does Zillas like uh, integrate into the end to end solution? Actually, is my next question as well. Um, do you mind talk like on high level the architecture, how your um, technology solution established around Zillas Cloud? I think we already talked this a little bit from the demo and what you just talking about. Right. But let's right. uh, just like yeah. Yeah, sure. I'll give a little more detail to that because I, I did I did uh, um, on purpose intend to uh, during the demo sort of point out the areas 
um, of the app where where we're taking advantage of the Zillow's cloud and Zillow's is is really giving us that level of performance. But let's go back and rehash that a little bit. So um, when we're doing the syncing process, uh, that syncing process is the AI engine is analyzing the pictures as it's as those pictures are being uploaded to the to the PicMo cloud. And that analysis, um, that AI engine analysis produces an embedding. That embedding is now being stored in the Zillis cloud. Cloud. It was not prior to that, uh, prior to us making the decision to make the move to Zillis. So that embedding gets stored there. That's the beginning of the process of, of, uh, of how Zillis is, is helping us uh, to achieve what we've achieved. Um, so now once that embedding is there, pictures, the picture itself is stored um, in blob storage on the Azure side, but the actual embedding is stored in the Zillis side. And so um, when we go into, so then um, obviously the AI, AI engine is uh, creating the library and creating the albums and creating the, uh, and inserting all the pictures into the albums uh, in the library and so forth. Um, so now we have, um, we, we have a, a, a technology a representation of our media, okay? And I'm when I say media, I mean our pictures and and ultimately it's going to be videos as well. Um, so so now when we go to do a search, our AI engine again will will take the search phrase and convert that to an embedding. And then that embedding is then fed into the Zillas cloud. And uh, through and, and and a search is made on that vector database in the Zillow's cloud, and that's what comes uh, produces our uh, subsequent response for the answer to what is the picture that fits that particular search phrase. Cool. Thanks for sharing. Um, then I guess the community are really uh, interesting here. If there's any challenges you were ever facing the whole process, and if Zillow's team ever helped you to get it through as well. Yeah, in fact, um, we had to make some decisions along the way. Zillow's was helping us uh, with asking us the right questions, um, the technology folks, and so we we um, we sort of prognosticated um, what we thought our future held in terms of how our users were going to use um, our our app and uh, how fast it was going to grow and so forth. And uh, we ended up outgrowing that uh, that rate of growth that we uh, had anticipated. And we ended up with a performance issue early on. And um, and the Zill is, we, so we contacted Zilla support and Zilla support immediately. And it was, it was actually on a Saturday, it was on a Friday night uh, that, that leaked into Saturday morning, early Saturday morning. And um, uh, Zilla's support was on top of it and it was solved by morning. So, um, so we were back in business. So we were really pleasantly surprised with the speed in which uh, Zilla's support helped us to get uh, our problem uh, solved. And we haven't had any problems with performance since. I'm really glad that our team helps and the app works as usual. Um, then with that, I would love to actually to hear from you. What are some of the top two to three things uh, you think you and your team get benefited from Zillus? Can you share some like a specific example with us? Yeah, like I said before, I think I think that um, you know we we wanted to from a business perspective stick to our knitting, and by that I mean you know, we didn't have any vector database experts, uh, you know, um, on our staff. And so we were faced with either going out to, to find these, these, these people to augment our staff, um, to rent people on a short term period, um, to do a whole host of other, you know, types of business solutions to that problem. And, um, <clears throat> And so when when um, when we we uh, found out about Zillas, we said, "Wow, okay, so so this is sort of a um, for us this will be, this will be a one stop shop, and this will allow us to uh, um, to sort of avoid some of the business uh, issues and be able to implement our technology solution in the Zillas cloud, and then and then have one 
uh, sort of one number that's a lower number uh, from an expense standpoint than what we would have had to go through uh, prior to that. And, uh, and, and so it's, it really is sort of a turnkey solution for us. Awesome. Then let's talk a little bit about the future. Um, do you mind share some of the cool features on your roadmap, like uh, you're going to build around Zillow's cloud and vector database? <laughs> well, I'm not going to get into uh, our, our strategic product roadmap. Obviously, that uh, that's a proprietary uh, thing that we want to keep our competitive advantage. But what I will say is, um, as I, as I uh, sort of alluded to in the very beginning, uh, being an everything app, we, um, we're going to be adding a lot of exciting features going forward. And uh, there's going to be um, a fair amount of demand, new demand, new and different demand on the Zillas cloud. And uh, so what, what's nice is, as we, um, as we progress down our product roadmap, we will be, we, we have, and we will be uh, in the future, having um, specific technology meetings with the Zillas uh, technology group and, um, and, and talking about one of the, the, the things that we want to uh, implement in the immediate future and talk about how that is going to add load to the Zillas cloud and, uh, and how do we avoid any performance issues and what do we need to do to, uh, you know, to sort of facilitate those new features? And so that those those things will continue to happen as as we uh, as we progress forward. Okay, then let's put the zealous aside for anyone who's here would love to hear some of your advice about how to leverage the vector database to better do the image or picture, even video management. Do you have any like a tips? Um, or advice um, for people who want to build a business around it? Are you look, looking for people to uh, to put to, to type into the chat? Oh no, I'm asking you one last question. It's like, do you have any like any like tips or advice for people who want to leverage the, oh, the oh, technology sorry, factor database? Yeah, oh, okay. let's I put missed... it like a zealous aside, but just yeah, like a general time. like a tips. Yes. Yeah. yeah, no, I, I misunderstood your your question. I thought you're you it was a broader question. Um yeah, I, I I would say I would say that that you know one of the things that that hopefully comes out of this is that you know obviously AI wasn't um as hot three and a half years ago when we started the company and started down the path of using AI to solve, to, to, to really be the fundamental basis for our product. Um, but now it's obviously very hot and um, all across the spectrum of many, many different industries. And I think that, <clears throat> I think it's important that, that as people look to, um, to use the, 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 the sort of the results um, of, of any AI engine that uh, that creates the embedding to to look at Zillas um, as a potential solution um, for or any ve vector database, I guess, if you if you want to sort of set Zillas aside, as you said, um, and um, and be able to uh, um, to really use the, now, now these databases are not good for really anything else, quite frankly, um, but they are really really good at that. And uh, so, you, you know, storing the embedding, searching for the embedding, and then, um, and then bringing those results back is just, um, just unbelievable for these types of databases. So that's cool. what I would say. Yeah, I appreciate the sharing. Uh, with that, uh, I'm just going to open for question and answers. Um, if you want to answer any questions to Alex, you can just paste your question into Q&A. Okay, um, so the first question I got is, uh, what measures have been implemented in PICMO to ensure quick and efficient photo searches, especially when dealing with large volume of data and a picture? Um, great question. So, so we, we have um, three separate environments in our cloud infrastructure. 
Um, and that includes that include the Zillas cloud is included in that in that overall strategy and architecture. The first is a development area. The second is a staging area and the third is our production area. So um, <clears throat> what we do is is we when we implement new features after we we sort of play around with them in, in the development area and we finally get them to where we we want them to be. Then we put them in the staging area and the staging area um, mimics production exactly. And so what we do is we then um, do load testing um, in the staging area and we measure very closely what the performance of the system is before we, we let any new features go out into production. So that's our process. Cool. Um, let me see. Um, another question I got is, um, are you willing to discuss some of the security protocol in place for photo storage and a backup for PICMO? How does the app guarantee the safety and the privacy of user data? Yeah. Um, so I, I can talk about it um, at a high level. Um, and uh, so I mentioned, I think, in the beginning of the demo that the the pictures, when they're taken from from the gallery of the particular phones, they're encrypted and they're they're encrypted then in transit. So as they're being uploaded into the cloud and then they remain encrypted in the cloud storage. So, um, so all through the entire process, the pictures are encrypted and um, not even my employees can see a user's content. And that's on, done on purpose. Uh, I, I don't want to be in a situation where an, any of my employees can, can sort of um, snoop around surreptitiously into any user's uh, accounts and and look at pictures. Um, your pictures are private, and uh, and they remain private, and uh, they remain encrypted all through the process, um, and and even while at rest in storage. Let's see, uh, I think there is another security related question. Um, how is security managed in the system? For example, some photo would be illegal to possess. Does that does that same illegal extend to the embeddings? How does Pigmo ensure illegal content is uploaded to its infrastructure? Hmm, great question. So uh, I talked about the AI engine in from sort of a macro perspective. The AI engine is made up of, of a number of different models. And so we, 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 we've always, We've always understood um, that in a large public user community, there's going to be bad actors. And with bad actors comes what we call harmful content. And so what we've done is created uh, harmful content models within the AI engine. So for example, nudity and gore and terrorism and so forth. Um, those, uh, there's a, there's, there's at least six, maybe seven different, um, harmful content models within the AI engine mm -hmm. and, and pictures that have that content are quarantined and they're not allowed to be placed up in to the PICMO, uh, cloud proper, I'll call it the cloud proper, meaning where the albums are and, and so forth. Because ultimately, um, you have the ability from a user perspective to be able to um, tag an album or a picture individually um, as public or private, or you can share it only with your circle of friends and family, and uh, so you can you can keep it semi-private. I'll call it. And uh, so with that ability, we want to make sure that that um, that the PICMOverse is is really a safe environment for everybody. Cool. I guess there's another comment about this data lake equivalent of a 
sewage pit. <laughs> That's an Sorry. interesting one. So there's an yeah, I think there's a comment from the same person who asked the question. The say what you mentioned is the data lake equivalent of sewage pit. I I I didn't get that. I can can okay. I see what that person has posted? Yeah, or? I think I think you can say that at the Q and A. I have access to it. Okay. Yeah. yeah here. Yep. Um, the data lake equivalent of a sewage pit. <laughs> I guess that's what uh, I guess that uh, is is when when you refer to um, uh, to harmful content. Yeah, I mean, um, you know that that is. Um, that is what we face these days. Yeah. So we have to protect against it. Cool. Well, I got another question. Um, what is the process behind Pigmos automation album creation? How does the app determine the best way to categorize and organize photos into album? Yeah, good question. So the 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 AI will uh, tag um, a number of different items inside of a picture. And based on foreground, background, um, and so forth, the AI through our, again, this is something that's that's proprietary to, to PICMO, um, the details of that, but, but ultimately it decides on what is the most prevalent piece of that picture. So, um, and then it, then it creates the album for that, and then it stores the picture in that album. Uh, we try not to have albums with one picture in it, um, and uh, uh, so we, we 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 have a process by which we can uh, recategorize one album, uh, one picture albums, uh, and and uh, recategorize that picture into a different album so that we don't end up with a number of one picture albums. But um, but yeah, good question. Cool. Um... Is there any other questions? Uh, let's wait for like uh, 30 seconds more. If not, uh, we're gonna conclude this uh, webinar. Okay, I guess we can conclude today's webinar. Um, Alex, thank you so much for sharing your experience, and thanks, to, thanks really, uh, thank, thanks so much for all the good words about Zealous, and uh, we wish you and the Pick Mall doing great. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Okay, cool. Bye, bye, everyone. Bye, bye.